you see people, one thing you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of different things in every store. You learn something different every time you read it. One thing you're going to see is, they didn't disrespect the king. They didn't disrespect Nebuchadnezzar and his belief system. They didn't disrespect it. They honored theirs. How do you honor God? You honor your God and his belief system. You understand? Like when Paul were, were in, I think, Corinth, and they tried to set up a shrine for them, how they showed them, they're like, no, nah, man, don't do that. One God, they let them do what they want to do, but when it comes to teaching, you got to know how to fight. You don't supposed to hate people because of their belief systems. All we got to do is love and honor God. The Sandrach and Bendigo, when they was in the Babylon, go around terrorizing non-believers, ridiculing them, bad-mouthing them, no, just showcase your God. And God will give you the stage. <laughs> he gave them the stage in the form of a fiery furnace to showcase their God and their belief system and their strength and their God. You see, these people, this day and age people, all you got to do is showcase God. And he revealed his son to us. That's what separates us from the rest. We know who his son is. They believe in God. True. What God? We believe in Jesus. That shows us what God we are talking about. And there are other ways to showcase who your God is. Jehovah. I am. But Jesus is God. And the human form. We know it wasn't Moses that appeared in the fire furnace. We know it wasn't Elijah. Because all of them were sleeping, except Elijah. He went to heaven. But we know it wasn't them. We know who it was. The Bible is clear. It looks like the Son of God is in there. Abraham experienced the son and the father in the same day. The son talked with him and the father raised <laughs> fire, the rain fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah from him. We honor our God. They said Lot vexed his soul among Sodom and Gomorrah. He stayed there, but he wasn't one of them. You see, I can relate to this in a lot of these stories. When I first became a Christian, I got to give you a testimony. My ex-wife, she's still a witch, or still a pagan to this day. I hate it what she was doing, and I hated it so much that I was just pushing, pushing, pushing. And I did get some things accomplished through God. But I wasn't showcasing the love and mercy. Just the hellfire and brimstone version. I wasn't showcasing the sun as much as I should have. And back then, I wasn't strong enough to be around such things. Let's think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had to be around all that ungodliness in Babylon. But if you read the whole story of Nebuchadnezzar, at first of off the back, 
God called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. I did a video on this not too long ago. He called him his servant. Why would he call Nebuchadnezzar his servant? Never killed. Nebuchadnezzar wasn't even a true believer at the time. But you'll know that Nebuchadnezzar was driven into the wilderness and repented and honored God towards the end of his life. You see, you don't know who's going to change. You don't know who you're rep when you're representing Christ, who is going to rub off on. It rubbed off on Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar loved Daniel, even though they didn't serve the same God. He said, I will make your enemies to be at peace with you. But how can he make your enemies be at peace with you when you act the same way they act towards you, towards them? You're not showcasing the love of Christ in your life. You're not doing God no good service by acting and behaving that way. You walk circumspectly. You talk circumspectly. You behave circumspectly. You be compassionate. You be loving. You be merciful. They want to kill you, let them. But you don't reward evil for evil. It's very simple. I'm learning this over time. I know people right now who are walking. And I tell you right now, just like Paul said, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Who guards are their bellies. Holier than thou people. That's why they ain't reaching nobody. And they don't know how to walk how Jesus told you to walk with compassion and mercy and forgiveness. Not hate. Hate does not bear the fruit of the Spirit. There is a time to hate. God's time. It's time to be angry. God's time. Not just be angry because you want to be angry. The Holy Spirit makes you angry. It's a whole, the whole different game. Ball game there. Yeah. That's the Spirit that's working in you. Like I told you before, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. He slew thousands. The Spirit of the Lord compelled David to slay Goliath. There is a time. But we have the New Testament. We have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Like I, I watched the video and I watched so many people who don't understand how God works. There's no way God would allow you to go to an event like the Grammys. Why wouldn't he? To showcase his power. To showcase him in the midst of an adulterous and wicked and evil generation. God decides to use you to showcase him. And a lot of people fall short and miss the opportunity. I was talking to my wife the other day. I was like, well, I said this music take off and they want to give me a award. I'm like, if God wills it, all I'm going to say is Jesus. And I'm not going to accept that award. I'm going to showcase Jesus. What's a trophy? I don't like idols, so I'm not going to accept it. But I do what I'm supposed to do for God on that stage if God wills it. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Like, thank Jesus. Forgive me to Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the most. And people are doing it. Tyson Fury, boxer. They'll be asking him questions. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You see, I learned a lot from other people. What to do and what not to do. That's who it's about, Jesus. You know, a lot of people want to understand, Houston, how can you still talk to a pagan woman and be a Christian? That's what I'm supposed to do. Just like I still talk to murderers, thieves, liars, and everybody else. What's the difference? Sin is sin. Have you read the New Testament? Have you read who will not inherit the kingdom of God? Sorcerers, whoremongers, adulterers, liars, murderers. The list goes on. And they say witches. And warlocks, idolaters, covetous, the list goes on. Now, in order to get away from this, you have to leave the whole world. Maybe you have to leave your own body. Because sometimes you sin with your eyes. 
We got to be able to operate and maneuver in a wicked world with the help of the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ. Just like he helped Daniel. Just like he helped Ness, at, at, you know, Ness, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like he helped them stand their ground in a wicked and adulterous generation. We're not supposed to run from the enemy. What he said, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. <laughs> now, that can be both work more than one way now. Sometimes you have to walk away from the devil. Sometimes you got to stand your ground for the devil, but you'll learn that as you walk and as you go. You just got to stand up for what is right in a wicked and adulterous generation. I don't condone my ex-wife, Rizcraft. We have arguments like this. My God never loses. We'll see. We will see. That's what kind of argument we have. Then I have arguments with my wife. I'm wearing down. God got me. God got me. Glorify God. There's one thing about it. You keep God, you keep Jesus Christ in the forefront, you will be delivered. Whether it be in life or in death. What they say. If he don't, I'm cool with that. But I'm not finna bow down or serve your gods. I will renounce them. God gives you a platform, you glorify God. You see, you're not trying to push away people from God. You're trying to bring them to God. So you got to learn how to do it. He said, some say with fear. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Some say with compassion. So you need discernment to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. You need the Holy Ghost to assist you. Now, when you got self-seeking and bitter envy, that's all I was when I first started. It was all about me. It was all about me. Houston, Houston, Houston. Then that gradually is all about Jesus. You know, when I'm trying to improve myself, I start being selfish. A lot of people think they're operating in the Holy Spirit. And they're operating in a spirit that's them, that's inside them. And they call themselves Christian. But they're not working the work of an evangelist. Working, the, They're not using their ministry properly. Yeah, we're supposed to expose evil. Just imagine if you had to walk your whole life. Everybody you see. Now think about that judgmental behavior. Everybody you see, you judge it. It's just hellfire and brimstone. You only showcase it. One aspect of God. Or you maybe it's showcasing one aspect of yourself. And how you Look at yourself and how you look at others. Like we live in a world where some people may proclaim they hate gay folk, but they only heard hate certain go for gay folk. A slain they hate witches and warlocks, but only hate certain witches and warlocks. You see, the thing is, you shouldn't hate any of them. You shouldn't condone sin. You shouldn't embrace sin. That is true. Like for a whole year, when me and my wife were separated, I kept going up there to see my kids. At the same time, I would minister. And I would encourage my kids about Jesus Christ, knowing that their mother is a witch. And I still would tell them the dangers and you should serve no other gods. You see, the thing is, it's so sly. I've been talking about my kids, but I talk in a loud manner. You hear this too, don't you? Then they happen. Something may never happen. Something may happen. Let your light shine before men so they can do what? Glorify your Father, which is in heaven. The three, let their light shine. Did you see it? God put them on a stage. On a stage. To either submit to the king's decree, which goes against their God, 
or to submit to the Lord. They chose to submit to the Lord and the Lord delivered them. Now, it don't work that way for everyone. Take Stephen. Stephen's testimony, and when the Holy Spirit moved him to speak, that was his last time. That was his last moment. That was his moment to give his testimony and give reverence to God. And they killed him for it. But he's good. Life nor death. To separate me from the love of God. Do you understand me? Or do you not understand me? Do you understand what the word does? It gives you a boldness. That you are able to stand in the presence of the enemy. Surrounded by demons, devils, warlocks, sorcerers. And stand your ground. And I, bro, I watched one video. Where a guy said this, right? And the guy was saying this. People were like, no, he's wrong for that. <laughs> They're wrong for going. God opened the door. In the presence of the enemies of the Lord. For them to glorify God. That's what you do. When the door is open. You glorify God. Now think about that. How proud God would be of you. If God gave you that platform. Because people who are weak. They're going to look at it like. God would have never did that. Have you read the Bible? No telling what. Lot was doing. When he was in. Sodom and Gomorrah. But one thing you know he wasn't doing was evil. How do you know that? Because Jesus said. Should I tell my servant. Abraham, what I'm about to do. And I'm finna save Lot. Should I tell him in it? Should I tell him this? And he asked him, he's like, and Abraham pleaded with Jesus. What if this many good souls are there? Alright, if it ain't that many there, I won't do nothing. If it's that many, I won't do nothing. If it's that many, I won't do nothing. Come to find out. It was just three. Willing to follow God's lead and then follow their father's lead. His two daughters. The wife, she wanted back in. And she turned to a pillar of salt. God saves his people. No matter where you are, stand your ground. Did I say be evil with it? Did I say condemn? You go in the hell. Did I say condemn people to hell? Only one person can send somebody to hell. And you are not that person. You can tell what you can tell people what characteristics and what type of people would not go to hell. But for you to say who's going to hell, that's not godly. Like a direct person, like you look at a person, you finna go to hell. Or go to hell. That's not Christian. You say what the word says. You can't say who's going to ascend to the mountaintop or who's going to go to the earth beneath you. You can't say that. Because you never know who can change. Nebuchadnezzar did all this evil. But think about it. God allowed it because the children of Israel were doing evil in his presence. He sold them into the hands of their enemies. Just like the Bible says he would do. When you read the promises of the Lord, you better look at both sides of the promises. You can inherit a blessing or a curse that still applies today. Hmm. You understand, people. You see, a lot of us are still trying to live like the old. But you got a lot of stuff to do, boy, and girls. You don't have to live like the old. You have to keep his commands, the ten. And love. The ten. And love. The ten. And love. 
which sums up the ten. And if you love him, you keep his commands. Can you make other people keep his commands? No. You showcase God's love so once they start loving him, like you love him, hopefully, if they accept Jesus Christ in their life, God is just changing them, then they'll love the same. Mm -hmm. Let me pause and I will continue.